I've heard it being said that uh, oh, I should be careful. These, some, many of these people voted for me, and if I continue this exercise, perhaps they'll not vote for me again. If, if by the grace of God, I'm in, I'm, I, I'm in a position, my party allows me to go again, and I have the health and everything to go again, that I'll not get it again. And I'll say to myself, well, this is a choice that all of us have to make as human beings. You do what you think is right, or do you do what you think will allow you to get along? I think that you do what you think is right. That is what you're required to do. Fortunately for me, in this fight, I have great allies. First of all, within my government, the people who are in the front line of that, some, all of them are here. The Minister for Environment, Science, Technology and Innovation. The Minister for Lands and Natural Resources. The Minister for Water Resources and Sanitation. Eminent Ghanaians, responsible Ghanaians, who have gone out of their way to lead this crusade. But from the beginning, they said something, which is the reason why you're here today. We cannot win this fight without the support of the traditional authorities of our country. Any serious social mobilization of, in, of Ghana since time immemorial, if you're not involved, it doesn't happen. If you, the chiefs of our country, are not involved, it doesn't happen. So it's what the president said that he's put the presidency on the line. That's, and he met the chiefs two weeks ago. He said that that statement was neither bombast or just for the cheap political talk. And then the Akunta mining case came. And questions have been raised about whether government has shown enough goodwill in its act and approach towards addressing illegal mining. Lawyer Martin Pebo is, you, you've petitioned the CID yeah. together with three others. I think mm. um, you have uh, uh, Adam Senanu and then also engineer Dr. Kenashigbe and mm -hmm. then, and then of CDD. Mm -hmm. You've petitioned the CID about Akunta mining. Yes. What are you seeking the, the CID to do? Yes, yeah, so we saw Erasmus Asari Donko's uh, documentary on Joy FM. It showed that <coughs> Akunta mining had gone into the uh, Tano Nimiri Forest Reserve and mined without any authorization. So that is Galamse. Contrary to Section 99 of the Minerals and Mining Act 703, as amended by Act 995. Mm -hmm. So we thought that, no, as citizens, and you see, once again, citizen Ghanaians were just a bit laid back, docile about it. I announced that if uh, uh, Erastros wasn't going to do it, I would do it. And it took one week. I did it a week later. What I was expecting is that other citizens would have felt challenged. Anybody, please, let's educate citizens. And I'm sure even before I even repeat this, million, there are some million, at least one million Ghanaians know that when it's a criminal matter, it need not be your property. It need not be your property once you've seen something illegal taking place. You walk into a police station and lodge a complaint. So he didn't need me to say it, wait one week later, and nobody had done it. So I had to do it. I mean, what kind of citizens are we? Are we so polarized? So are we saying that all these people you are supporting? And that's the thing. You meet people who beat their chest. I'm an honest person. I'm conscientious. But he, he never wants to take any initiative. That's why I keep saying, Alfred, look, citizens have to understand that. You can lie in your room and die. Any small thing. Sometimes you meet people and they're like, hey, be careful. Be careful about what? Me? I don't care. I have to just play my role as a citizen. As for death, can come any time. So, having seen that documentary, spoke about it, and uh, threatened that if nothing is done, I will go on. A week later, I saw that still nobody had a reported the matter to the CID. So, I went ahead, drafted a petition. And other people called, we see Kwame and go, yeah, mm -hmm. they all came on board. There were even more people now seeking to join, right? Yeah, we'll see how we'll add them subsequently. But these four 
were able to, uh, these other three were able to sign with me. Then we presented it. So when you see the videos, you see that Akunta Mining, owned by Chairman Wuntmi, that's Entry Bosiako, Bernard Entry Bosiako, and Kwame Entry, they went into the Tano Nimri Forest Reserve without permits, without the requisite license, and mined gold, which is against our law. So we can't sit for this and polluted the Tano River. They're mining very close so to the river. Prospecting. The, the, the forest mining. Commission. Don't worry, there's footage. Forestry Commission will come to them. They are also complicit in this. We'll come to that. But this is what do you call it? Um, Akunta mine was mining very close to the Tano River. Very close. Under the law, you can't mine uh, less than 100 meters of a major uh, river body, a major natural water course. But this one, they were close, quite close, maybe 20, 30 meters at most. Very, very close. So they and polluted the Tano River. That's the water you and I. You see how Ghana water is complaining that it costs far more now to. Uh, that's what do you call it? Um, um, that's pu the purify purify the, water. The water. Yeah, that's dangerous. And you see, I heard a report where they said that in Kumasi now kidney and what what diseases in children had Indeed. increased. And we are sitting down as a, a nation watching our Kunta mine type chairman would wouldn't me alone mining and keeping all the, the resources. Why? In this irresponsible manner, irresponsible mining. So we had to take a step forward. We reported to the CID yesterday. We were there. And then we took some steps. The director general took some steps. Monday we will go and continue, and then we will see how the mm. uh, it, it pans out. Yes, let the law take its course. Let the law take its course. We'll also be following that quite closely to see what happens with the CID petition. But Mr. Jacob Oseyebua, I'm bringing him here on, on this particular issue because I remember sometime last year, even the Minister of Lands and Natural Resources actually gave a directive that there was not to be any mining activity in forest reserves. Yes. That was quite clear. Mm -hmm. So for the Forestry Commission, that letter, which uh -huh. we have a copy of, uh -huh. the CEO says that yeah. he has no problem Actually. having uh, 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 mining go do prospecting, even if that was the case, no. in a, 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 a forest reserve, flies in the face of that directive by, by the, the Minister of Lands and Natural Resources. Let's just even, let's say that it was a prospecting when there is a directive from the minister. Joshua. Um, I can see. All what is being done are just gimmicks. There's a German uh, statesman, Otto von Bismarck. He said that, I just want to quote two officers. He said that, with bad laws and good officials, it is quite possible to rule the country. But if the officials are bad, hmm? even the best laws will not help. This is exactly. But in Ghana, ours is even more than that. And then he again said that the same person said that stupidity is a gift from God, but it should not be abused. <laughs> stupidity, you see, is a gift from God, but it should not be abused. And I can say it on authority. When it comes to what people term as fighting galamsey we are even abusing stupidity as a nation you see a lot of people do not know what is actually going on behind the scene between this same up mpp and ndc if you remember in 2013 we had a conference because of my background in mining we had a, we had a conference in uh, tema when Mahama started his fight against illegal mining. And then I led the team, and then we sent a communique. We told them that using the military and things like that is not going to work because it's a socioeconomic problem. Galam says it's a socioeconomic problem. And therefore, you need socioeconomic tools and solutions. Other than that, you cannot fight it. Now, that aside, we know how it ended. When this government came, in 2017, myself, we led together with, uh, you know, at the national uh, forum like that, mm -hmm. I was called by um, Peter Mawu, mm -hmm. and I did a presentation. And through that, the um, one doctor, uh, Chris Poda, came to me because he was also asked, because he has been talking about how we need to mine responsibly. 
And so they put the two of us together. And then we came out with a blueprint uh, as to how to transform the small scale mining into $60 billion industry. If you, if anyone Google and search for Solomon Investment Group, when you go there, you see everything. I myself, I took it to Professor from Paul Boatin. This is the blueprint. Developing from small scale mine. And then what happened? All the ideas. In 2017, I like a Kenasube. Mm. Together with myself, we went to Kumasi. And over there, I made a presentation. I told him that what they were doing was not going to work because it's a socioeconomic problem. And I asked this question. We've been talking about fighting Galamse, fighting Galamse. What is fighting Galamse? I've suffered from cancer before. Mm. When I was fighting cancer, I didn't need uh, uh, military people. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. We say that we are fighting malaria. If you're fighting malaria, there's a two. When you are even um, going for conventional war, it's not all of them that you need guns. Some of them you need intercontinental ballistic missiles in going to that time. And so when we talk about fighting Galam, say, what is it? And in that presentation, I told them that when we say that we are fighting Ghanaian, say we are fighting anything that stops Ghanaians to mine responsibly and sustainably in order to create wealth for Ghana. That is something that we should fight against. And then I stated it over there that no president, no government should stop responsible Ghanaian mining to create wealth for Ghana. And you know that, that article uh, 2576, mm -hmm. which has given power to the president. And so between MPP and NDC, they always want power to be at their disposal, and they abuse this power. Right. And so even our chiefs, our chiefs that they know that are at the center of it, in the 2017 forum, I told them that without the chiefs, we can never fight this that I'm saying. They should give them power. Okay. They should restore that power which allows the chiefs to summon people to the palaces. Well, now the development is that, as per what the Lands and Natural Resources Minister said last week, the chiefs will now be involved in the processes of issuing licenses um, to any person who wants to mine or undertake any mining activity. Dr. Busakara Foster. Well, I'm glad to hear that because I made the suggestion last week uh, from one perspective, we all know that the minerals are the asset of the state. The topsoil is the asset of the community. But you cannot destroy the community's asset in order to get to the uh, minerals. So there must be stronger involvement. And before you issue those licenses, just like in commercial scale agriculture, etc., you must have community consensus and evidence of it that they agree to your development plan and then they know what they are going to benefit in it etc so the issuing of the license cannot be done without first the consent of the communities involved that's number one the other thing that we've been talking about is the chief's authority in this issue we have said time and again we have to structure the role of traditional leaders such that it is not only when there's a problem that we then push it to them, you know. They must be involved from the beginning. And that means, once again, going to the Constitution, taking a look at our Council of State. How can we reformat this Council of State, redefine its role in order that it can be an effective check mechanism? And in that process, we have to find a role for the chiefs so that the authority that we want them to exercise mm -hmm. will be constitutional, not only at the community level, but even at the national level. Right. And having said that, there's a last point I want to make. We are now the world's largest producer of gold. Not so. Mm. Yes. That was like that statistics you referred to yes. two years ago. Yes, but whatever the case, so we are one of the largest producers of gold. So, so, yeah, so how can of, you be not, when not gold? When gold is what everybody uses to shore up their currency. Mm -hmm. If you go, America has the biggest deposit of gold. China has big deposits of gold. England has big deposits of gold. Russia, uh, China, uh, Russia has big deposits of gold. Everybody wants deposits of gold. Why? because they want a fallback position that strengthens their currency. 
So how can the person who is first, if not second, largest producer, how can our currency be floating in the wind? Dr. Abu Sakara Foster is the founder of the National Interest Movement. And Jacob Oseyoboa is a former independent presidential candidate. Martin Pebo is a private legal practitioner. Gentlemen, thank you. Yeah, thank you for coming. As Appreciate you were, it. Please note that thing that they said. But there's already provision in the Minerals and Mining Act, ah. Section 13, that the chiefs be given notice and all that. So it's not new. That's what they can say. It's, it's already there. It's, it's not more than that. It's, it's, it's already there. So the activation and implementation yes, of it is what is the problem. And, and when we talk uh, about these fundamental issues, yes. we have to ensure that fundamentally, if we're producing gold, it is used to shore up our currency. Okay, yeah. stay with us. We'll be back shortly and talk about the currency right on the back of what you said. That's the next conversation with industry players, trade, and how this is impacting on all of us as a people.